Well, let's go live now to Lebanon, where the newly chosen Prime Minister, Hassan Diab, is speaking. Let's listen in. Do you believe that you are able to meet the people's demand and take uh, the people out of this crisis? People are not to blame. Uh, this is what we have come to, and it is no surprise that the people have come to this point. People have been suffering for long. That is true. We will consider the necessary procedures and necessary financial measures in order to exit this crisis. However, I request you to give me time. You are to give me some time. Well, you've been watching the new prime minister of Lebanon, that's Hassan Diab. He was addressing the nation there live on Lebanese television. Well, he was just appointed by the president, Michel Aoun, after consultations today with Michel Aoun's deputies. There has been a, a large amount of consternation about his appointment as the new prime minister. He was nominated by the Hezbollah alliance, and this comes after months of political stalemate. You'll recall that back in October, large amounts of Lebanese came out onto the streets and demonstrated in cities across the country. After that, Saad Hariri, the prime minister, the Sunni prime minister, resigned. He was then the caretaker prime minister but refused to take office again, resulting in a political stalemate that has ended only now. Well, for more on this, let's bring in our correspondent, Tony Bertley, who's live for us in Beirut. Tony, we were talking about the consternation at, at um, Hassan Diab's appointment earlier. Uh, what's, the, what's the political sense there now? What kind of reaction are we seeing? Well, at the moment, he's just given an impromptu press conference just behind me, and he said some very emotive things. He said that he was going to try and form a government as soon as possible. He's going to be talking in the coming hours and days with former heads of government or all political parties, and also from representatives of those civil societies that were leading the demonstrations for the last two months, calling for a complete overhaul. He actually said, I hear, I've heard your calls for the last two months. Uh, I've felt your pain and heard your words and demands. So he wants to talk to them. He called out to the entire country to give him a chance to form a government and make this work. He said saving the country should be a priority and he wants everybody to join hands to try and make that happen. Now, as you all know, he was nominated predominantly by the pro uh, Hezbollah Amal alliance. Uh, the sunny blocks walked away. They didn't make a nomination. Uh, for whatever reason, we're trying to read into why they didn't do that. Um, mm. But people are saying that he was a Hezbollah man. He is saying quite clearly tonight that he is an independent candidate and he will work for the benefit of Lebanon. That will have to be remain to be seen. How that translates to the people on the streets who've been demonstrating and calling for an overhaul uh, remains to be seen. I want to ask you more about that, Tony, because we have seen a huge amount of anger on the streets at the overall political establishment. How do, how do protesters in the street view Hassan Diab? What kind of a man do they think he is? Well, he, he's been a former government minister. He served in the government between 2011 and 2014. We've actually seen messages on social media today when his uh, nominations were coming through that maybe there was not everything that was 100% good about the man, that there was made corruption allegations. None of this has been corroborated. Um, but it's, it's interesting to know that his prime minister at the time, Mr. Najib Makati, uh, was one of the people in the sunny block that did not nominate him. Um, and he hired him in 2011. I think there's going to be a lot of mixed reactions to this. But as the man says, give me a chance. He represents an old establishment at the moment. The people want him to represent a new establishment. They want a technocratic government. They want new representatives, new analysts. They don't want this techno-political government that's ruled this country for 30 years through nepotism, through corruption, and it's led this country to the brink of economic collapse. So they want to see a big change. Now, he's got a big job on his hands to make that change happen. Before he can head a government, he's got to do a lot of talking, a lot of horse trading. And of course, you've got this big, large, sunny block that's been involved in the government since 2011, uh, they have got a big say in this. So he's got to do some deals and people are hoping that it will work. But we'll see tonight on the streets, we'll see over the weekend how they react to his nomination and his words.
Tony, we were talking earlier about Lebanon's very long history of foreign powers getting involved in regional politics there. And I'm wondering how his appointment is going to be regarded by external forces beyond the borders of Lebanon. Well, that's always been a continuing factor in Lebanon because ever since, you know, I've been reporting Lebanon, outside powers have play, been fighting their battles on, on the soil here. According to the Lebanese I've been speaking to, though, the outside powers, especially the U.S., say it's about policy not personality. They want to see a government that represents people, that is stable, that can bring prosperity back to the country. So that's what they're saying actually in, in, uh, in public. What they're saying in private, I don't know, because there's lots of issues at stake here. You've got Syria on the border, you've got Israel at the southern border. There's issues going on there. You've got Iran in the back of the scene. Hezbollah is here. It's very strong. So what is going to happen? How are people going to react? Are they going to become more Lebanese or are they going to become more international? We'll have to see. And we will continue watching very closely. Tony Bertley there for us live in Beirut. Thank you, Tony.